My name is Indu Subramanian, and I'm the Program Director and Vice Chair in the Department of Medicine, and I'm a faculty member in the Division of Pulmonary and Critical Care Medicine at Highland Hospital. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the basics of mechanical ventilation. The objectives of today's talk are to, number one, review the main indications for mechanical ventilation, review the four types of ventilator-induced lung injuries, introduce the basics of gas exchange. So let's start with the indications for mechanical ventilation. There are many indications, but I'm going to focus predominantly on three. Hypoxic respiratory failure, hypercarbic respiratory failure, and airway protection. So let's start by talking about hypoxic respiratory failure. The de definition of this is when somebody is not oxygenating, this is measured by PaO2 less than equal to 60, or their oxygen sats less than equal to 90% on oxygen. Okay, generally this is 50 to 100% um, non rebreather uh, or FiO2 oxygen. Okay, many conditions cause hypoxic respiratory failure, large PE pulmonary edema, ARDS, but this is, um, would be considered by many as the indication. Number two is hypercarbic respiratory failure. Okay, this is somebody who has too much CO2 and is having trouble eliminating the CO2. Generally, this is defined as 10 to 20 points, PaCO2 equals 10 to 20 points higher than normal. This is often the PA, uh, sorry, PaCO2 of greater than 60, or pH of less than or equal to 7.25. Okay, so trouble getting CO2 out. Some examples of this, COPD exacerbation, status asthmaticus, decreased CNS drive to breathe, all of these cause hypercarbic respiratory failure. Of note, the number one best thing for this condition is non-invasive ventilation, the use of CPAP or BiPAP. But if you try this and it doesn't work and you're still not getting rid of your CO2, that's when you want to try mechanical ventilation. Or if you're not a candidate for non-invasive ventilation. The, la the third category is airway protection. So this is somebody who needs an endotracheal tube to stent open their airway and protect them. This is anyone with a GCS less than or equal to eight. We consider it in these patients because they may not be able to protect their airway. We consider it in people who have uh, status epilepticus, continuous seizure, in people who are requiring general anesthesia, in people who have anaphylaxis or thermal injury, for example. So you get the feel for, for, these, uh, for this category. Okay, so those are the general indications. But another indication that one of my mentors taught me when I was a medical student and then an intern is anyone who just doesn't look good. Okay. Someone's breathing hard, diaphoretic, respiratory rates really fast, you can tell they're working to breathe, that will be an indication that no one will argue with. Four types of ventilator-induced lung injury. Okay, the alveolar epithelial cell right here is very prone to injury. And the most important thing to know is that this is a cytokine-mediated injury. There are four types of, four things that we do to the patient based on our settings on the mechanical ventilator that can further worsen this injury. Number one, volume trauma, too much volume. Okay, this is adjusted by the tidal volumes. And this leads to over distension of your alveoli, okay? We don't want to over distend the alveoli. 
So we want to keep the tidal volumes low. So less than equal to 6 to 8 cc's per kg of ideal body weight in all patients. Number two, barotrauma. Too much pressure at the level of your alveoli again. And this is measured by your plateau pressure that you'll learn about when you come here. So keep your plateau pressure less than, less than 30, okay? Number three is adelect trauma. This is a little bit harder for people to understand. This is when the alveoli open and then the alveoli completely close and then they open again and then they close again completely. Okay, so this opening and closing, opening and closing during inhalation, exhalation, inhalation, exhalation leads to shearing forces. So what you do here is you open up this alveoli at exhalation just a little bit by using a little bit of peak. And generally we use about five uh, centimeters of water of peak. And finally we have oxygen mediated lung injury. This is oxygen. Um, too much oxygen can lead to free radicals and um, cause injury that way. So keep your oxygen just adequate, right? So as low as you can go to oxygenate your patient. All right, so volume trauma, barotrauma, adelect trauma, and oxygen mediated injury. Our third concept of the day, uh, we'd like to talk about the basics of gas exchange. Number one, we are trying to oxygenate a lot of our patients, right? And we want to alter oxygenation based on what we see in our, on our blood gases or our oxygen saturations. And number two, we are ventilating patients. And you'll get a blood gas back and you want to know what are the settings on the ventilator used to control CO2 elimination. So let's start with oxygenation. There are two predominant settings we have on the ventilator that will alter oxygenation. Number one, it's how much oxygen supplemental we give, FiO2. And number two, it's the use of PEEP. Okay? This can be a little confusing, but if you have someone who, for example, their alveoli are completely filled up with fluid or pus, this person has a shunt. If I open up their alveoli a little bit with a little bit of peep, then this fluid goes out into the interstitium, allowing my alveolus to participate in gas exchange. Okay, so peep works to eliminate shunt, which is a cause of hypoxic respiratory failure. And so the use of peep will improve your O2 more FiO2 will improve your O2. And remember, you just need an adequate amount of FiO, uh, adequate amount of oxygenation. A PaO2 of 58 or higher is our goal. We do not need it to be 200 or higher, right? So keep that oxygen low to avoid oxygen-mediated lung injury. Don't need to go too crazy. And number two, the other concept we wanted to talk about today was ventilation and what are the settings on the ventilator used to adjust ventilation? Number one, it's respiratory rate. And number two, it's tidal volume. Okay. How fast are you blowing the CO2 out? And how much air is going in and out um, during each cycle of breath? And finally, um, I wanna make one point here. You can also control ventilation either directly or indirectly by altering the I to E ratio. This is the ratio of inspiratory time to amount of time in expiration. And we'll learn more about this when you arrive here at Highland. Um, so to summarize, we went over the indications for mechanical ventilation, which include hypoxic respiratory failure, hypercarbic respiratory failure, airway protection, and when you just don't look good. And number two, we went over the four types of ventilator-induced lung injuries. We talked about volume trauma, barotrauma, adelect trauma, and oxygen-mediated lung injury. And number three, we went over the basics of gas exchange 
as it pertains to the ventilator in terms of settings, controlling oxygenation, and ventilation. Thank you so much for being here today, and good luck, and can't wait to see you all.